Throughout the history of mankind, we have used angles in architecture and engineering to make incredible structures that withstand the length of time. From this, you can see the importance of angles for us in the past, the present, and the future. As we just saw in the video, angles are everywhere. But you might be asking right now, where were they? Here we have a staircase. In red, you can see the angle that is formed with the stairs with respect to the floor. Here we see two ladders. And here we can also see in red the angle that is formed with the ladder with respect to the wall. Here we can see a building that's leaning. It's the Leaning Tower of Pisa. The red lines show its angle of inclination. In math, an angle is a combination of two rays that come together at one point called the vertex. Here we have two rays. A ray has an end point and it continues in a particular direction. This one that we're looking at right now is called ray BA. Notice that this symbol is going in the direction of A just as it is over here on the ray. Over here we see ray BC and it starts at an endpoint and continues in the direction of C. We would write this ray BC. Now we're going to put them together to make an angle. As we can see here, we have ray BA and we have ray BC. Where they meet, this is the vertex. This part right here is the angle. We can name this angle several ways. We could call it angle ABC, making sure to put the B, which is the vertex in the middle, or we can call it angle CBA. If there were a number right here, like 2, we could also call it angle 2. And finally, if there's no subdivisions within the angle, we could also call this angle B. I guess you've noticed that the symbol for angle is this, and we write it in front of every angle we want to name. It even looks like an angle. Here we have two more rays. We have ray F E, and we have ray F G. We will name these ray F E. Notice we're going in the direction of E, and we will name this one ray F G. If we put these two rays together, we get an angle. We can name this angle angle E F G. Notice the F, which is the vertex, is in the middle. Or we can call it angle G F E. Or if we had a number here, like let's say 3, we could also call it angle 3. And finally, we can name this angle F. Here we have ray I, H, and we also have ray I, J. To write their names, we would write ray I, H for this one, and here we would write ray I, J for this one. Notice we always write the ray symbol to the right, even though in this case, our ray is going to the left, but we still write it in the direction of J. So it's the same thing. It's going from I to J, and here it's going from I to J. Over in the first one, it's going from I to H, and over here it's going from I to H. If we put these rays together, we get an angle, and in this case, we could call this angle H, I, J. Remember to put the I, which is the vertex, in the middle, or we could call it angle J, I, H, or if there was a number here, we could call it angle 5. And last but not least, we could call this angle I. Here we have a protractor. It's a tool for measuring angles, and it can measure angles from 0 to 180 degrees. If you look carefully, there are two sets of numbers. Over on the right-hand side, they start at 0, it increases to 10, 
20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, and it goes all the way to 180. If we look on the left-hand side, we also see that it starts at 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and goes all the way to 180 as well. Whether we use the outer or the inner scale for measuring will be determined by which way the angle is facing. This is the first angle we drew, and if you notice, we can see that the angle goes to the right of the drawing. We are also going to use the right part of the protractor to measure it. One thing we want to keep in mind is that this vertex has to be on top of this vertex and that this base of the angle must be also at the base of the protractor when we measure. Here we have our angle and our protractor arranged properly and we're ready to start measuring. And so we're going to start from here. Here we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. We see that this angle measures 90 degrees. An angle that measures exactly 90 degrees is a right angle. And the little square that we see in the corner is a symbol to show that it's a right angle. This is the sign we use to show degrees. It's a little circle. Here we have the second angle we drew, and as we can see, it opens to the right again. So we're going to use the right-hand side of the protractor to measure it. We have the angle arranged on the protractor with its vertex on the vertex of the protractor and the base is lined up. So we will start to measure now. We'll start from the right. We'll get 10 degrees, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. We can see that this angle measures 120 degrees. And we would write it like this. This is the last angle we drew, and we can see that it opens out to the left. So we're going to start measuring from the left on our protractor in this fashion. We have the angle and the protractor lined up. We have the vertex of the angle on the vertex of the protractor and the base of the angle on the base of the protractor. And we are ready to start measuring now. So we'll start here. We see that we have 10 degrees, 20, 30, 40. This angle has 40 degrees. And we'll write it like this. Let's just quickly review what we did to measure these angles. The first angle opened out to the right. So we started measuring from the right and we saw that it got up to 90 degrees. It was a 90 degree angle. The second angle also opened out to the right. So we started measuring the same way and we saw that we got up to 120. It was an angle that measured 120 degrees. The third angle opened to the left, so we started measuring to the left, and we saw that we got up to 40, and its measure was 40 degrees. Now I have a question for you. Can we measure angles without a protractor using our body? We can use our hand. I know what you're thinking, right? What? You just showed us how to measure with a protractor. How could I possibly measure with my hand? Well, of course, this is an approximation for measuring, but I'm going to show you a little trick. If we draw a line through our thumb and through our pinky carefully, we can see that it makes a right angle. If we draw a line through the middle finger all the way to the vertex, we can see that this angle here is 45 degrees. If we draw a line through our ring finger, we see that this angle is 30 degrees. And last but not least, if we draw a line through our index finger, we will observe that the angle formed is one that is 60 degrees. I know what you're thinking now. No way is that possible. So I'm going to prove it to you. Here we have the protractor and the hand with the lines on it. Let's measure these angles. From here to here, we have 30 degrees. From here to here we have 45, and from here to here we have 60. And voila! You can measure angles with your hands. But remember, it's just an approximation. Subscribe to my channel to get updates on new videos, and if you'd like me to create more, like and share with someone who might find this helpful. Thank you for watching, and see you next time!